what's going on people we are Tottenham TV here yet we're here again away to the top six yeah. I sound like a broken record yet again but uh, another terrible display and a terrible um, result we've lost 4-1 to Man City let's get into the player ratings we start with Hugo Lloris we gave Hugo a six probably the only player to come out with some sort of credit in yeah. a way even about even that's not saying a lot because even him in the first half was like, extremely nervous his kicking was diabolical even worse than his usual low standards yeah. and there was a few nervy moments where he you know was dallying on the ball but he did make some good saves um, and if it wasn't for him it could have been worse than 4-1 first half he was he was kicking the ball out of play countless times it was really pissing me off uh, but like you said, yeah, he made some great saves as well. If it wasn't for him, it probably would have been 9-1. Yeah, but, he, but to be fair to him, even then though, even his saves he made, he was parrying it back out to, into dangerous areas but there and were City some... could have scored. Hugo Lloris in these big games, he just looks nervy. I don't know, I just don't know, I can't get my head around it. The guy's supposed to be captain of France. As I was saying before, um, you know, Chelsea at home this season, he made a mistake. They actually had last season, he made two mistakes. It's coming a bit of a theme, and yeah. even even this season, maybe the second goal away at Arsenal, yeah. people saying could have done better. But then again, away at the burn-up, he was man of the match, so so we gave him a six. Let's move on to Kieran Trippier. Oh dear. We gave him a two. I think that's the lowest rating we've ever given anyone. Yeah. Um, in the first half, he just looked completely out of his depth. Sane was walking around him countless times. How many times did Sane get in behind him? Time after time after time, whenever Sane got on the ball. Uh, Trippier was struggling, he couldn't get near him whatsoever. It looked like Sane's walking pace was faster than Trippier running. It wasn't even just um, the amount of time Sane walked past him. Whenever Trippier got on the ball, he was giving it away. His, his, um, you know, he, he wasn't finding his man, his passing was terrible, his crossing was awful. And that's his strong point of his game. And when you look at, from last season when we had Carl Walker, mm -hmm. His defensive play, we all know, isn't that great, but his pace got him out of a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And Trippi just doesn't have that. Maybe Poch made a mistake not starting Aurier. Or maybe he should have brought him on when he saw how, how badly Trippi was struggling. That's it's a bad know. judgment call from Poch, I think, yeah. Even and at half-time, take him off, because Trippier was struggling big time. I feel that Trippier, against these teams, he has to play at the top, top of his game. Otherwise, he's going to get found out. Yeah, and, you, and we even saw against Arsenal how he, he struggled as well away at Arsenal. So, but that's know. what we were saying last season, or I was anyway, that Trippier against the top six doesn't really cut it. Against the teams lower than that, yeah, he's fine, he's good enough, but against the bigger sides, he doesn't cut it. Saying that, last season we beat, you know, he was he played very well against Arsenal and United, I remember, at home um, when, when he played. And yeah, also, we were never losing those games, though. And also against Madrid this season, he played very well. He's, he's one of our best players, actually, that game. So, yeah. so Trippier, we gave a two. Danny Rose, we gave him a four. Yeah. A somewhat surprise selection at the start from Pochettino. We thought maybe he would go for Davis, seeing as Rose played midweek, but he started Rose. I thought Sterling gave him a real torrid time. I think he really struggled. Not as much as Trippier, um, and he was able to get up and down a bit more than Trippier um, without too being too exposed, but I thought... It wasn't up to the rows that we know. I thought uh, Walker gave him a tough time as well down that right hand side. He was getting past him quite often, and he got forward a, f a few times quite well. But um, but I thought when he got forward, he was picking out the wrong options. He I remember there was a couple of moments he had a shot from 25 yards when there was a few passes, better options, and there was a good breakaway. I remember a really great breakaway we had, and it fell to Rose and he crossed it straight out of play. We had like four men over in the box. In the first was, half. Yeah, in the first half. That was really frustrating from Danny Rose, so um, a few bad, I think that's why we gave him a four. Danny's been back for a while now, um, and you would think the performances would start to pick up, and they just haven't. Well, this game was particularly hard. He had Sterling and Walker up against him, and not that much help, to be fair to him. Um, same with Trippier as well. He didn't, he didn't have that much help. He was he was one-on-one -on -one with Sane every single time, yeah. um, which uh, didn't help him, but... Rose is supposed to be, he, he, you know, he prides himself on being one of the best left backs in the league and not on this evidence. Um, he, he struggled big time. Well, he needs to improve if he wants to get that wage packet that he thinks he <laughs> deserves, that's for sure. 100%. You know, I don't think he did any, any better than Ben Davis would have done in that. Mm, I agree. Movie. I agree. We move on to Jan. We gave Jan a five. Apart from that great block he did in that first half, uh, was a goal-saving block really. Apart from that, he mm. looked poor throughout. He gave away the penalty. He gave he? away the penalty, which was a really 
lunge, basically. Yeah, on I mean, the it, people say it was a dive. Maybe it was a tiny bit of a dive, but I still think the lunge. Nah, was, it was a penalty. I, I still, I still think the yeah. I was about to say I still think the uh, lunge was an awful lunge. It was a bad tackle, and he was getting nowhere near the ball completely. He just went for it without thinking. Didn't stand up, and it was a poor challenge. So yeah, we gave a five. Moving on to Eric Dyer, we gave him a four. I thought he had a really, really poor game again. After some positive showings, like away at Man United and a few other big games, he was just diabolical, I thought, in this game. He was just getting cut open time after time. I thought that mistake for the fourth goal was just lazy, reckless and sloppy. He was, was one of our diabolical. biggest culprits um, in terms of losing possession, just being sloppy. And I thought... I've never thought him and Jan have ever made a really, really great centre-back partnership, to be fair. They've never been that good together, and I thought it really showed in this game. We got cut open time after time, I thought Dyer just was really bad. A lot of people call out Eric Dyer for his centre-back capabilities, and and everyone that calls him out was proved right 100% yesterday, on Saturday. And everyone's wondering what his best position is, centre-middle or centre-back, and... On this showing, maybe it, I thought I thought it was centre back, but it was just a really, really poor showing. I don't know if does he have it. Maybe he's better in a three instead of a two at centre. I think for sure he's better in a three, mm. but I, I feel personally his best position is centre mid. I, I think it might be a centre back in a three. I think it might be his best position personally, but I think in a two, he, he, sh he really struggled. He showed his best form for Spurs in a midfield. I think our Spurs are at their best when when he was in their back three. I think that's when we showed our best. Well. I don't know about that. I think so, that's my opinion. Well, my opinion is the other way. I think he's, we've shown our best when he's been in the middle three. When? When? Hmm. When he first broke into the team and we were chasing down Leicester when he was in that mm -hmm. midfield, he was class. Yeah, but we were better last season then. We were, yeah, you're right. Was he in a back three the whole of last season? The whole of the second half of last season when we were sick. When we were doing good, yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> but I just feel he's suited more to the midfield role. No, I don't. I don't think he's. I don't think he's quick enough on the ball for to be in the midfield. Mm. But anyway, we gave Dyer a four. So we move on to Moussa Dembele. We gave him a five. Um, after his good showings in the past couple of games, we thought his um, his problems have been behind him. But how wrong were we? He was completely terrible against City. I thought wasn't controlling that mid midfield whatsoever. I thought, well, I thought when he got his foot on the ball, he was kind of moving the play a bit about a bit, but. He would when we, when we didn't have the ball, he was absolutely nowhere. He completely was, nowhere. He just com looked completely leggy the whole game. De Bruyne, Gundogan and Fernandinho completely uh, overran the midfield. Especially De Bruyne, but still, our midfield was completely overrun. There are times where you're looking at our centre mid and there's just no, no one there. Nothing. We're at the quarter upfield or too deep and they were, just no, they, were just, they were just nowhere. And it was kind of like Gundogan, Fernandinho and De Bruyne have the whole reign of the centre mid to do what they want. And you give De Bruyne that kind of space, he's going to hurt you. And he did. And he was fa absolutely fantastic, Kevin De Bruyne, completely outclassed uh, Moussa Dembele. But Dembele, we know how good he can be and he's so much better than he performed on Saturday. And I thought he was just completely overrun. I don't know if it was his fitness problems or... Um, it looked like his legs... Stamina problems. It looks like stamina problems to me. I think he didn't look on par in fitness with anyone in that midfield at all. And there was occasions where he was getting on the ball and losing it and just lo and, you know getting pressed high and wasn't be wasn't able to react to it. De Bruyne nicked the ball off him in midfield so many times. Yeah. And you would think, you know, they know each other, they play with each other in Belgium national mm -hmm. team, but no, nothing. And you just look at De Bruyne, whenever he gets the ball, he's so quick to pick out a pass so like either over long or short and Dembele doesn't have that. He's never had it. That is what's missing from his game. Yep. So Dembele, we gave a five. Harry Winks, mm. moving on, we gave him a four. Uh, I thought he was even more of a passer to the Dembele. I thought he looked completely out of his depth in that midfield. After we've been singing his praises all season, Harry Winks, for how good we think he is, how, how much he's uh, moved on his game and how he's won the first names on the team sheet. He got outclassed on Saturday. It was embarrassing actually how badly he got outclassed and I think he was he was a contributing factor in, in the corner when we when um, Gundogan got a free header. We never gave him the ball and he never was able to get his passing game going. He was just pressed way too high and he didn't know how to deal with it. For me he looked completely out of his depth. You know we've been banging on about him, how he's an amazing young player coming through um, and against most oppositions, he's been he's been amazing. We've been banging on about him literally all season, mm. but 
this was, I think, maybe a step too far for him. Harry Winks has got to prove that when he's being pressed high by good quality opposition, he can handle it, and he just didn't prove that on Saturday. You know, he played against Madrid. He looked completely at home in that midfield. The difference was he was given space. Yeah, that's the thing. He maybe when he's given space, he's, he has to adapt to it, and he has to show he can. He needs to learn that he can, he can perform like that under pressure as well, because... Mm -hmm. We didn't see that on Saturday. Uh, Christian Eriksen, we gave Christian a five. He was probably... He got a goal right at the end of consolation and was a nice finish, but other than that, he was he was fairly poor again. Away at a big team, he was he went missing again. He, he had a few nice moments, a few, par a few cross into the box, a few passes where he looked dangerous, but other than that, it really wasn't... You know, you look at players on, on the opposition team where Man City, we, th we thought at the beginning of the season we, it was possible we could be competing against these teams. We thought Eriksen was, you know, our talisman, one of the best attacking midfielders in the league. He's, you know, against the big teams, he's just not showing it. Away at Arsenal, away at Man United... And, and, you know, and today, not good enough, really. When you look at Kevin De Bruyne, mm -hmm. yeah, Kevin De Bruyne is a player that Ericsson can match up to in, in ability, in position sense. Mm. But when you look at De Bruyne against the big five teams that Man City have played this season, mm -hmm. in five of those games, De Bruyne has been man the match. Mm -hmm. In five of those games, De Bruyne has absolutely smashed it out of the park. Got the winner against Chelsea. Got the winner we? against Chelsea. He's been scoring. He's been assisting. He's been all round insane player. Ericsson, whenever we play a big team, he goes missing. The difference between Ericsson and De Bruyne is just the physicality. I think technically they're pretty similar. I don't think there's that much difference in quality. It's just physically, De Bruyne is a, 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 a you know, he's, he's a beast. He's really strong and he's got a good stamina. He's got a good running ability. He's quick. Ericsson doesn't have that. Ericsson doesn't have that speed, that turn of pace that um, De Bruyne seems to have, and that he doesn't have that physicality to shrug people off. And, you know, it shows if you press him high and you just bully him, you can bully him out of a game. 100%. And I thought last season he was maybe, I don't know, maybe we had Dembele and Wanyama to kind of counteract that um, so Ericsson could go and play. But this season we've kind of lost one, that physicality of Wanyama. And, you know, Ericsson, people at Ericsson Alley are both struggling. So moving on to Deli Alley. Deli Alley, we gave a three, another performance. Yet again, Deli Alley. Um, did create created absolutely nothing I thought during that game offered he just looked lethargic he looked slow he could have been sent off I was on De Bruyne um, just just horrible I, I'm waiting for Ali to put in that performances of last season and he was putting in, he was putting some really sloppy passes in sentiment as well he kept losing us under the pressure. Ball. yeah there was, I remember there was one ridiculous pass he was like he was like on the edge of our own box and he plays an outside with a foot pass Right into the centre mid of, of Man City, you give, putting us straight under pressure again and they scored. Form is so off colour at the moment. Um, and it was another symptom of that. It was another really poor performance from Deli Alley. We're just waiting for, for his form to pick up like it did last season around this time. But it, we're still waiting. When he, it doesn't seem to be happening. But, uh, you know, I thought he did improve his performance his last few away games against, I think it was like Watford, he had a decent game. You're saying improved his performance. The performance actually didn't improve. It's his effort that improved. The performances still weren't good. No, I, I disagree. I, I do think his performances have improved. I think his effort and performances improved. But I, but at least it's, it's almost seems like in these games where the opposition are willing to match our effort. He just he, he doesn't seem to have an answer. He's not even getting those positions anymore where he used to find a goal to, you know, be in the right place, right time. He's not doing that anymore. I and said, if he's not I mean, he's not doing that, then what what is he doing? I said at the beginning of the season that well not the beginning of the season, but it was maybe maybe four or five weeks in that that Deli Ali's body language doesn't seem to be what it was last season and and you told me I was completely wrong and people were laughing at me for even suggesting that. But I think that, um, that it's actually showing now that it's the, it's, since then it's got gradually worse. I, dis I tell you why I disagree. Um, because last season his, his, his body language was never great. It's always been like this. I think, I think Deli Ali... When I say body language, I'm talking about body language and effort in a game as well. His effort was always there. He always tried in a game. Mm -hmm. This year, it doesn't seem like... I know, again, I disagree. Go on. I disagree. I think last season, again, 
I, I think a lot of the time he would put in very similar performances that he's putting in this season. He would just end up with a couple of goals. This season, he's he's just he's not scoring. Well, he has scored. He scored seven, eight goals this season. Not still. Well, in all competitions, yeah. But in the Premier League, he's only got three. Yeah. In, he's in, a lot of his goals have come in the cup competitions. Um, you say Ali? Yeah, he's a guy who relies on moments. Mm-hmm. But I think that's. That's more this season to last season. I thought last season his performances was more accomplished than they are this season. In the second half of last season, I agree. In the first half, they weren't. I, mm. I think they're very similar to what we're seeing now. It's just he he was getting in the right place, right time. He was scoring. He was getting the vital moments in games. And at the moment, he's just not doing it. And when we when he's not doing give, it, it's we would never us. give Ali a, a two or a three, even at the beginning of last season. Definitely not. That's because we were winning. Yeah. Um, but I don't know maybe do, do you think he deserves maybe it's a bit of time on the bench for Lamella maybe 100%, 100% moving on to Harry Kane yeah we gave Harry a 5 I thought some some moments Harry Kane was a uh, one man attack going forward he was trying to do everything by himself he kind of just didn't have any support a lot of the time and he nearly got a goal from you know he had a shot from 25 yards which Edison saved and one another one just wide but other than that uh, he was kind of isolated we struggled to support him um, he nearly got sent off again, and there's another player after uh, that foul on Sterling. So he's, he's becoming, he's getting a bit of a reputation for those kind of lunges as well. He's done it a few times. Yeah, he, you know, but that's his passion. You know, I yeah. don't mind that. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he he tries to work as hard for the team. He he's a winner. He need what he wants to win desperately. Even when we're three 0 down, doesn't care. He's gonna keep trying. Hundred um, percent. That's the but, thing we can never fault Harry Kane on is his effort. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think I think he was probably our most likely attacker to get get something. Even though Eriksson was one who scored, but we it wasn't enough. We didn't support him enough. And you know these big games, he he expects the team to be on the same level as, as him, and they, we're, we're just not at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent. Moving on to Human Son, we gave him a four after his great performances past kind of four or five weeks. Um, this performance, he went missing completely in the game, mm-hmm. I thought, didn't get into it whatsoever. Can't really remember one moment at all from him. No, I think even Ford's generous, actually, yeah. on reflection. Um, I d- I, he was completely anonymous. Even as even like Ericsson and Ali were getting on the ball occasionally trying to make something happen, he was just completely nowhere. Yeah. He, you know... You, Someone like Son in this kind of game, he is so vital because he can give you that pace on the break to try and really hurt them when we have the ball. And he just didn't. He just w- wasn't there. He wasn't. He didn't stand up. He wasn't. Didn't want the ball. He and the only times he, I can only really remember him getting the ball was when he's being sh- uh, shepherded out out wide, and he was pretty much being easy to deal with. And he just wasn't the threat that he's definitely been the last few weeks, and that we know he can be. He's so strong on both feet, and he's so quick, and he's got a good dribbler. He's got to show that against the biggest teams, and he didn't on Saturday again. You know, in games like this, when you're playing a team on such form, mm-hmm. and on and like being touted as one of the best Premier League teams ever, the best um, team in Europe at the moment, your player's got to stand up and be counted. Mm-hmm. And, and not one player in that team stood up on Saturday. I feel like... Harry Kane at times was just a one-man band up front on his own. Yeah. And I, 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 that's that's all I would say. Other than that, I agree with you. I think we all, all the players, kind of went into their shell. They kind of, you know, we we look so nervy at the back, trying to play the ball out of play. We have good quality players at the back on the ball. Trippier, Jan, Dyer, they, you know, they're some of the best in the Premier League. Oh defenders on the ball and they just look nervous giving the ball away we all knew City were going to press high and you know what if it after 15 minutes 20 minutes half an hour it's not working maybe we should have adapted and that comes down to Pochettino he just kept doing the same thing and it wasn't working and it continued not to work for the whole 90 minutes and we got absolutely annihilated at the end of the day yeah so let's let's talk about Pochettino for a little bit yeah for a rating I would give him probably a three or a four. Give him a four. After seeing how the first 20 minutes panned out, mm-hmm. you would think he would change something. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't make a change till what, the 70th yeah, minute didn't, or something? Yeah, I thought he'd definitely make a change at half-time, given that, how the game that, was going. That is completely disgraceful, to be honest. Like, we got battered in that first half. I've never seen us get battered like that since Pochettino has come to Spurs. Okay, except for one other game, that was against Arsenal. Yeah, and that was a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. But this was a, next, a level above that. That was a level above game. that. And now we got battered against Arsenal. This was a level above. This was yeah. a complete. We we got torn to shreds in every department. 
-hmm. The midfield was getting overrun. Both our wing backs were getting done time and time again. And he didn't change anything, not once until the 75th minute. I thought if I thought 100% he should have taken Trippier off at half time. Yeah. I thought he was getting annihilated. We needed that pace of Aurier. Even going forward, he would have helped. Um, and especially going backwards. And I would have brought on Lamella much earlier than he did. Well, and you saw when Lamella came on, he created chances straight away. Yeah, he looked sharp. He looked good. And he looked, you know, he, I you think know, he was would have helped. When Winks went round the keeper, Lamella yeah. created that. Mm -hmm. And I would say... I would say I would have definitely uh, changed the tactics after about half an hour to just play a bit more direct, play up to Harry Kane. He's a strong lad, you know, they had Mangala um, at centre-back and, and Otamendi. Kane can compete physically with them, get it to his chest, you know, try and play more physically and try and get another way around it because playing out the back was not working and it just continued not to work throughout the whole 90 minutes. You have to adapt and you have to try and find a way that you can affect the game in in a different way if it's not working. I think it was naive of Poch to go in like he did. I know it was the lineup that, that I wanted. I don't know if it was a lineup that you wanted. It was not far away. Yeah, because I, I saw the lineup and I was very happy with that lineup. But then after seeing how things are going, you've got to change things up. And it's criminal not to. What I would say is, um, the only thing I would say is that in the second half of the first maybe 10 minutes of the second half, um, I thought we actually did play quite well. We were we were good. We were, we were yeah. We actually started to dominate a bit. We actually started to pen them in. Um, but what happened was they got they caught us on the counter. We didn't get the goal. They caught us on the counter attack, and and Trippier and um, and other players just weren't didn't have the pace to get back, and we got absolutely annihilated on the counter attack. But let's be honest, day. we were in the game for what fifteen minutes. That's what I'm saying. Like. About fifteen minutes. That's, that's all. So. That's all I'm going to give him credit for. I thought we got back in the game a bit in those 15 minutes. It looked like maybe we could actually give a game of this, but once the once the second goal went in, it was game over, really. And um, as soon as that second goal went in, heads just dropped completely, and they just gave up. They literally gave up. Well, then we did have that moment, as you said, when Harry Winks went around the keeper. I thought we were allowed to. That yeah. was a two 0 We had a couple. We had a couple of moments, but the capitulation at the end was ridiculous, and it's not something I like to see. It's, um, you know, it's something like as you know, something like AVB Spurs or Sherwood Spurs would do. It was it was ridiculous. It was oh, you can't be doing that if you're going to be a top team. You can't be capitulating like that at the end of games. And that fourth goal was a disgrace. It was an absolute disgrace. It was an easy ball that should have been cut out by Dyer. He he fluffed it completely. Yeah. Sterling didn't even touch the ball and it went through Lloris's legs. And he had the easiest of easy goals. And it was just really hard to watch because we're not used to that. that in the last couple of years. But for, we're becoming used to it now this season. Poch has really got to uh, sort something out He's got there a big job on his hands now because I don't know what's going on with the squad but there's definitely some sort of problem in there that, that we need to iron out. I don't know, yeah. We're clearly in a big fight for top four. Um, I thought after these two wins in a row at Wembley maybe... Um, you know, confidence would be high and would give City more of a game. But and to say, you know, in the in the first half, City completely dominated the ball and they killed us. In the second half, they let us have a bit more of the ball and they killed us on the counter attack, and we completely played in their hands. And Poch tactically not being able to adapt is a big problem. Yeah, so Poch has got a lot of problems to sort out, a lot yeah. of problems, um, and it doesn't stop there because we've got a massive game this weekend against Burnley, which and that's not going to be game. easy. Not at all. Burnley are playing great great stuff at the moment yeah they're a very solid team i don't think it's going to be like like obviously against city or against one of these or arsenal one of these teams where they like to uh play lovely football but it's going to be a really tough game it's gonna be a fight and they're going to fight for every ball every second ball they're going to stop try and stop every attack they're going to sit deep and they're going to try and you know get us on the counter attack and they're they're a really solid team Burnley and uh, you know arsenal struggled there they got a lucky win the other the other week Last they, did, minute, yeah, they, didn't, they didn't deserve it? that win either and if we can go there and get a win, it'll be a fantastic result because Burnley have been absolutely fantastic this season. But if we go up there and we're not up for it, we'll get beat. Hundred percent. Yeah, well, yeah, hundred percent. On on set pieces, they're strong. They can they can get us, and we've been really bad at set pieces recently. Well, we go to Burnley this weekend for a massive, massive game. So check out our vlog that's going to come out Saturday night. Like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what your thoughts were from the game on the weekend. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs! Spurs.